New York, Taiwan, Japan, China, big earthquakes are happening all over the world. Responses to major earthquakes have become a hot topic of discussion. Xi Jinping becomes known as Xi Runaway. Taiwan's most touching images are applauded globally. Together, through Taiwan's great earthquake, we uncover the difference between Taiwan and China. On April 3, 2024, the most powerful earthquake in 25 years struck in Hualien, Taiwan. So far, this 7.4 magnitude earthquake has killed 10 people and injured more than 1,000. Today, we'll go over a couple of hot topics prompted by this earthquake. First, one unexpected hot topic is the vest of the mayor of Hualien City. What makes an ordinary vest the center of attention? The protagonist of this short video is an ordinary looking mayor. She appeared on the front line of the quake-stricken area in a vest embroidered with her name in golden silk thread discussing the relief plan with rescuers. Next to the filming location is a dangerous building that was severely damaged during the earthquake. This short one minute video has triggered heated discussions among mainland citizens. Many people have noticed that this mayor doesn't have a grand presence compared to even a small village party secretary in mainland China. No harm is done if there is no comparison. Others have noticed that there are no people petitioning around her. A number of citizens pointed out one crucial difference. Officials on the other side of the strait are accountable to their constituents and have to appease them, while ours are accountable to their superiors and have to appease their leaders. How can it be the same? One Twitter comment read, It's the difference between power stemming from voters and power given by Xi Jinping. In fact, anyone who has been to Taiwan may know that it's standard for Taiwanese officials to participate in disaster relief and wear vests bearing their positions and names after a disaster strikes. It is common that officials from the president and vice president down to mayors and chiefs all do the same and it isn't exclusive to the mayor, the woman in the video. After the earthquake, Tsai Ing-wen, Taiwan's current president, immediately went to the emergency response center wearing a vest with president printed on it. Lai Ching De also came to the disaster site with vice president printed on his vest. In a normal, free, and democratic country, this is common and part of the workings of a functional administration. Still, it has made a strong impression on the people of the mainland and triggered a massive public outcry. So why is this? Let's take a look at what Xi Jinping did when China was hit by disasters. It can be said that wherever there is a big disaster in China, Xi Jinping will surely run far away. At the height of the Wuhan COVID-19 epidemic in January 2020, Premier Li Keqiang went to Wuhan. Xi was there only two months later. He gave a speech over the screen and with a mask on. In July 2021, when Zhengzhou in central China was hit by a massive rainstorm, thousands of people were stuck in flooded subways and tunnels. Still, they didn't see any top officials from Zhongnanhai, not even central or provincial leaders. Instead, Xi Jinping traveled to Lhasa, Tibet, China's westernmost province for a tour of the city. Beginning in late July 2023, flooding hit many parts of China. In an effort to protect Beijing, officials ordered the release of reservoirs to flood Zhuozhou City in Hebei province. Victims of the disaster lost their homes and there were countless deaths, injuries and damages. Even military units drowned. However, none of the seven members of the CCP Standing Committee showed up at the disaster area, and official sources showed that the top CCP officials were on vacation in Beidaihe at the time. Xi Jinping didn't bother to make a presence at the disaster area, even for show. Instead, 500 armed police officers were sent to the site, not for rescue missions, but to keep victims quiet. 
One month later, she inspected a place thousands of kilometers away and didn't show up at the disaster area until three months later. Nowadays in China, no matter the disaster, government officials aren't seen to be present to attend to the situation. On the contrary, the official's immediate response is to cover it up. Media reporters who go to give an account of the situation are beaten up and arrested. Years of corrupt rule under the CCP have brought the public's expectations of officials to an unbelievably low threshold. The Chinese public no longer expects any amount of normalcy and humanity from government officials. This is because all officials that can be seen are images that have been carefully crafted for the media's consumption. The second hot topic arising from the earthquake are the two women TV anchors. They were live on the air when the earthquake hit. Both anchors appeared remarkably calm in the face of the disaster. Although they could hardly keep their feet steady, with debris falling from above and the studio's light fixtures shaking violently, their voice remained calm and collected as they kept reminding the public to stay safe. The footage went viral on social media almost immediately. Many citizens praised the two anchors for their dedication and professionalism. It has greatly inspired the people of Taiwan amidst the earthquake. Interestingly, the footage of this anchor reporting on the earthquake has become news and it even appears on CNN. In fact, this is some of the most striking footage that the China Insights production team has seen of this Taiwan earthquake. The calmness and composure of the two anchor women isn't an uncommon sight. We've seen many videos from the day the earthquake struck, showing that the people of Taiwan in general didn't panic amid the massive earthquake. People in cars and motorcycles crossing over the elevated bridges weren't screaming in panic or running around. They stopped, waited calmly, and watched until the earthquake passed, then continued on in an orderly manner. In other words, this earthquake has not only shown the world that the quality of buildings in Taiwan is strong, withstanding the earthquake and successfully protecting countless people, but it has also demonstrated a common quality found in the people of Taiwan and a civil society built upon transparent and effective governance. The public has maintained their composure in the face of a major tribulation. This reaction, however, doesn't come naturally. It has been constructed from an all-encompassing trust in the builders, the regulatory agencies, the school's training in disaster preparedness, and past positive experiences in disaster response. Thus, it has developed a society of people who are able to cope with the crisis calmly. This doesn't imply that Taiwan is perfect, but judging from their reaction so far, few countries in the international community can achieve what Taiwan has. It thus brings us to another focus of attention, the show of humanity and morality during the earthquake. Of course, everyone is scared, but it's in the nature of a caregiver to care for others. They think the safety of the patient, the baby, must come first. These are nurses of a postnatal care center in Taipei. When the earthquake struck, they didn't panic and run away but tried their best to gather the cribs together first, use their bodies to keep the cribs from violently shaking, and did their best to protect the babies until the earthquake passed. Their professionalism and dedication have won praise globally. Many comments were left commending them as angels. Another video shows a young Indonesian caretaker who is looking after an elderly lady. When the earthquake happened, she instinctively leaned over and put her arms around the old lady, protecting her with her own body. Even when the TV beside her collapsed and she could hardly keep her footing, she stayed and didn't escape herself. What a beautiful person with a beautiful heart. Those scenes have touched people from mainland China differently. Let's compare the following news from the mainland China for a better perspective. On April 3rd, the day of the earthquake in Taiwan, a middle school in Wenzhou became known online. Shockwaves of the Taiwan earthquake reached this area and the tremor was powerful. 
According to information online, when evacuating from Dong O Middle School, two unexpected incidents happened. First, when evacuating, students at a middle school found the gate to the playground locked. Thousands of students were stranded in a small square. Some students called the earthquake evacuation Dong U Middle School version of Dunkirk Retreat. The second incident is even more outrageous. According to a student group chat, one student revealed that when the shockwaves were felt, the teacher told the students to stay on their seats and continue the session, and then ran away herself, leaving the students in the classroom. Do you see the difference? Across the Taiwan Strait, on the Taiwanese side, caretakers' first reaction was to take care of babies and the elderly, rather than escaping on their own. While on the mainland side, there are teachers who cajoled and abandoned students to escape first. Why is there such a big difference in their reactions when they are only a strait apart? In 2008, during the devastating Wenchuan earthquake in China, a middle school teacher surnamed Fan was teaching a Chinese language class at the time. The moment the earthquake struck, he immediately rushed out of the classroom, forgetting about his class. He ran downstairs all the way to the playground by the school building. When he got there, he realized that he was the first one in the whole school to reach the playground. This incident triggered widespread criticism of him in China. Mr. Fan was nicknamed Fan Runaway. 16 years have passed since the Wenchuan earthquake. Now the same story repeats in Wenzhou. 16 years later, there isn't any improvement, but rather an even worse reality. Teachers are respected as engineers of human souls in China. If they are so morally distraught, what kind of students can be expected from China? The fourth topic that has been widely discussed is the former spokesman for the CCP and the current ambassador to the United Nations, Gong Shuang. He is known around the world for his displeasing manner. On the day of the Taiwan earthquake, this man was speaking at the UN Security Council on the issue of children and armed conflict. Suddenly, he added a sentence at the end saying that a strong earthquake had struck China's Taiwan region, and that China's mainland side is highly concerned about the damage caused by this earthquake and has expressed sincere condolences to our compatriots in Taiwan for the damage caused. The Chinese mainland is willing to help. We are grateful for the sympathy and concern the international community expresses. This manipulative speech on behalf of Taiwan quickly attracted a great deal of public attention. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Taiwan was the first to express its outrage in a statement saying, We solemnly condemn China's shameless use of the earthquake in Taiwan to manipulate perceptions in the international arena. It's not the first time that the CCP has claimed to represent Taiwan in the international community. It has entertained itself that way for years, but why has it provoked such a major public outcry this time? The reason is simple. The CCP has gone a bit over and broken the bottom line again. Taiwan's congressman has criticized the CCP's move as disgusting, perfectly illustrating the term shamelessness. But unfortunately, China is expressing concern on one side while sending more than 39 sorties of military planes and ships to harass our maritime airspace. We don't know how to describe this kind of behavior. When they sent out the PLA to harass Taiwan, our national army, besides supporting the disaster relief in Huadong and all over the place, we also have to divide our troops to take care of China's threat to Taiwan. On the day of the earthquake in Taiwan, the CCP dispatched 30 military aircraft and 9 warships to carry out an intimidation operation, with at least 20 of them crossing the median line of the Taiwan Strait. This isn't the first time that CCP military aircraft and warships have harassed Taiwan, but this time it happened at a time when Taiwan had just been hit by a strong earthquake of 7.4 magnitude. The CCP still used outright intimidation by force, a classic case of exploiting others' vulnerability with no moral bound.
The last heated topic is that the casualties and damages caused by the Taiwan earthquake were lower than expected. It has sparked discussions and concerns about the earthquake-resistant standards of buildings and housing quality in mainland China. The eight-story building on Xuanyuan Road in Hualien tilted but didn't collapse. Residents in mainland China who suffer from tofu drag construction have praised Taiwan's buildings for their excellent quality. High-rise buildings tipped but didn't collapse, tilted but didn't flop. Mainland Chinese people praise Taiwan's construction quality. It shows that the construction industry in Taiwan has a conscience. Buildings in mainland China are terrible. Sichuan earthquake, Gansu earthquake, Yushu earthquake, none of the buildings tilted, they all collapsed. On May 12, 2008, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Wenchuan, Sichuan province. According to CCP officials, close to 70,000 people were killed, over 370,000 were injured, and close to 18,000 were missing. However, a survey conducted by a civil organization, the Ba Shu Alliance, found that the actual death toll in Wenchuan was around 300,000, with more than 30,000 students killed, and that school buildings in the quake zone collapsed badly. The New York Times and other international media have published articles pointing out that the damage to houses and casualties caused by the earthquake in Taiwan were significantly lower than those caused by the 1999 earthquake centered in Nantou. These reports quoted experts as saying that the difference was due, on the one hand, to the less destructive nature of the earthquake itself and on the other hand, to the fact that the Taiwan government had strengthened the implementation of earthquake-resistant standards for buildings since the 1999 earthquake, thus laying a good foundation for minimizing damage. Finally, let's look at the building damage caused by the windstorms that swept through southern China at the end of March 2024. Windows were blown out of two apartments in a high-rise building in Nanchang, Jiangsu province. Three people asleep were swept from their beds out the window and fell to their death. It's foreseeable that disasters will likely become the norm when living in tofu dreg buildings in mainland China. These hot topics after the major earthquake in Taiwan have revealed the moral degradation in mainland China. It has allowed the world to see what Taiwan is like and at the same time revealed the moral quality of mainland China. It's not that there aren't good people in mainland China. Many mainlanders have cheered for Taiwan and applauded the Hualien mayor. They are clear-headed and sober. What's awful in mainland China is the absence of a normal government and system. The CCP is a regime that encourages evil and destroys kindness, hence producing a twisted social reality that turns good people into bad ones.